So the, the Smart Health Initiative uh, in India is focused on tackling the, the burden of non-communicable diseases. Um, it's an absolute epidemic in most parts of the world, particularly in India, where um, uh, it, it's now the leading causes of um, premature death and uh, morbidity. And these are common conditions like heart disease, stroke, uh, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, etc. Um, the, 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 the sheer volume of the number of patients who will be requiring care um, in India, particularly in the rural areas, is simply overwhelming. The current health system can't, can't really uh, handle that. Um, and one of the key strategies around uh, delivering basic essential care for these conditions will require what's called task shifting. So moving highly specialised tasks, usually performed by doctors, to much less um, uh, trained and skilled uh, health healthcare workers, mainly in the community, um, often community members, women with, usually women, with uh, an average of about nine years of formal education, um, and training them to identify people at high risk of these conditions and refer them for treatment. Um, and one of the core principles of, um, of the Smart Health Initiative is enabling these individuals to, uh, with the tools to provide these services. So this involves, a lot of this involves innovative technology around point of care devices that are very affordable and accurate. Um, decision support, which is um, cloud-based and, and takes advantage of the incredible increase in mobile communications and connectivity in India. So this is a really exciting initiative and, and the work we're doing, um, we hope, will be very scalable both in the government system as well as in the private health system in India. Uh, the challenges in, in, in delivering health care in India for the, the burden of non-communicable diseases uh, is around the existing infrastructure, which is very poor and is very much directed towards the traditional diseases of poverty, um, communicable diseases, infectious diseases, maternal and child health issues. Uh, so reorientating a, a health service to still focus on those, because these are still problems, but also um, uh, meet the challenge of uh, these new diseases uh, is enormous. Uh, and that's why we actually need major paradigm shifts, paradigm shifts like using um, uh, non-physician healthcare workers at large scale. But the challenge is, is not only in, in, in introducing such changes, but they have to be integrated with uh, higher level health system um, changes. So for example, uh, if a healthcare worker can be trained to identify someone at a high risk, and refer them to the doctor. But if the doctor's not in the clinic or the drugs are not available to the clinic, it's not going to be an effective strategy. So integrated care across the, um, all diseases that are a cause of, of uh, ill health in the country is, is a major challenge. Patient acceptance of um, these types of uh, disruptive changes to the way healthcare is delivered um, is, is important and interesting. I think um, having community members deliver care is often um, positively viewed. But on the other hand, um, the perceptions of doctors in, 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 in countries such as this, and I think in most parts of the world, is that you automatically um, receive a, a better quality of care if you're seeing a more highly trained professional. In fact, uh, if you adequately resource a lower skilled worker, you can actually potentially obtain a not, as, not only as good outcomes, but better outcomes. But um, communicating that and demonstrating that and inducing a culture change amongst both providers as well as uh, individuals in the community who would receive such care is a process, and that process needs to be undertaken.